Hi everyone, this is Dave from Geekanoids and this is my review of the Panasonic Lumix DMC GX1. Now Panasonic sent me this to review, big thank you to them. And yes, it's not a new camera, but they wanted my opinion on how this handles, how it performs and the results that it actually gives. Now this is a 16 megapixel micro four thirds camera. It's got their 14 to 42 millimeter power zoom lens on this, which I'll show you in a short while. It's got some really nice features. I want to cover off the things that I like about this camera first of all. Now the ergonomics are brilliant, absolutely superb. Look at the grip on this camera. It protrudes just the right amount, nice curve to it here. One of the best grips I've experienced on a small camera and it's coated with this really nice material as well. So it's super cool to hold. So we can get a nice grip on it here. Now I've got medium sized hands. They've also got a thumb portion here or a thumb grip just underneath this control wheel. So I can place my thumb here and it is very comfortable to hold one handed. So really like this uh, grip that they've got on the GX1. Now let's turn this on. I'm going to show you the second thing that I really like, the results from the camera. Now I'm going to upload these to Flickr. So you're going to be able to see these in full size, but these are so, so detailed, noise free, very, very cool and just they just resolve so much detail that I was really surprised at how this camera performed. Very, very nice. Now the screen's not the best. I was expecting a little bit more from the screen. The resolution's not up, quite up there with the best screens, but it's certainly good enough and the clarity is very nice. You can obtain a nice sort of shallow depth of field as well with the provided lens. It just works extremely well. Now the second thing is when you're using this for video, it actually does full-time autofocus, so it's continually focusing. You don't get too much hunting either, which is really nice. So they've done a good job on the AF system. I like the uh, sort of the way these controls feel as well. You've got a nice firm selection on the mode wheel, so they've done a really nice job on build quality. Microphones are really good when you're capturing that 1920 by 1080 video. The microphones do a good job of picking up the audio. We've got a built-in flash on the side here. You can see that pops up. It's more than adequate. It's not the best flash I've seen. It's not the strongest, but it certainly performs very well. You can fold it back as well, so you can bounce it off a ceiling if you want to. And just overall, I've been really pleased with it. Now, there are a few things I didn't like. Let's just cover those off. This is the power zoom lens, 14 to 42 millimeter power zoom. Now, I prefer a zoom uh, sort of ring that I can move to zoom in and out. This one, you actually use this switch on the side to go either wide or to zoom into telephoto. Now, the nice thing is the lens doesn't extend any more or any less. There's a slight movement as you're zooming in and out, but it doesn't protrude to go closer to the subject. So that's nice, but I just didn't like this, I suppose it's an acquired taste as to whether you like these sort of controls. They're more akin to what you'd find on a camcorder, and I just didn't like them. You've got the same here for focus as well, so you can manual focus using this one. Just didn't work as I'd expected it to. That said, the actual optic quality is extremely good indeed. I'm just not a fan of the control mechanism. That is all. Battery life could have been a little bit better as well. Um, but again, it's acceptable. I think I got round about three, maybe 400 shots from a single charge. The actual display is really good as well. We've got this uh, sort of, um, uh, what would you call this, level gauge. And looks like you're flying in a game, but this allows you to get nice straight horizons when you're taking your shot. That works really well. You can turn it off if you don't want it. The menu system, if I just go into menu, the menu again, because of the resolution of the screen, it all looks very big and sort of tacky, but it's very easy to set up all of your settings. And of course you can go right up to that 16 megapixel uh, picture size. I'm on 11.5 because I'm shooting in 16.9 aspect ratio, but you can even set this to do a one to one square framed picture as well. So it's got some nice features in it. Very easy to navigate through to the uh, motion picture menu and of course the custom menu and the setup menu and playback menus. We've even got some intelligent auto settings up the top here. So nicely laid out menu. It's just the resolution of the screen makes the menu look a bit sort of clanky and clumsy. We've also got this accessory port here. You'll notice there's no viewfinder on the GX1 
and you do have to purchase this as an additional purchase if you want an EVF or electronic viewfinder. But overall, the camera worked really well. Very, very pleased with the results that it produces. It's a nice compact camera. I probably wouldn't opt for the power zoom lens if I was buying one. I'd maybe save a little bit of money for the same price as the power zoom. You might be able to pick up a couple of lenses that didn't have this control mechanism on the side. But overall, the GX1, really nice camera. Very, very uh, good pricing on this as well at the moment because it's been out a little while. £590 if you want to pick it up with the power zoom lens or if you're in the US, $749. Thanks very much for watching this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next one.